In this video, we will discuss how to solve problems that use KB. Um, by definition, bases are going to produce hydroxide in solution. And so therefore, if you want to use KB, you must have OH minus as a product. Okay, that's very important. Just like with Ka, you must have H plus or H3O plus as a product with KB you need to have hydroxide as a product. Um, there are a few strong bases, and they're listed here. Here is how I remember them, is the strong bases are either alkali metals or alkaline earth metals, except in the alkali column, which is family 1A, not HOH. And then in the alkaline earth family, which is column 2A, the first two ones, beryllium hydroxide and magnesium hydroxide, are also not strong bases. The reasoning why is very simple. If I have HOH, that's just liquid water. Okay, and so of course that's not a strong base. And then if I have beryllium hydroxide or magnesium hydroxide, those are not very soluble in water, which means that they don't produce a whole bunch of hydroxide, which means, yes, they're bases, but they're not very, very strong bases. Weak bases, on the other hand, they are not going to dissociate a whole bunch. So they're not going to produce a whole bunch of hydroxide and um, they're gonna have very small equilibrium constants because of that, or very small KBs. Um, and we are going to have to use ice boxes or rice tables to figure out um, whatever the question is asking. Now, one thing that we're gonna see in a couple of these examples, and it's a little bit weird, and it's more about organic chemistry more than AP chemistry, is that if I see something with uh, a nitrogen, area. This is called an amine group if you take organic chemistry. And amines are generally uh, basic, meaning they pick up an H. And so that is why when I look at this, the H is added to my amine group. It's not anything that you should worry about for AP chemistry, but as we write <coughs> formulas or reactions, you're going to see that. And I just don't want you to think that that's anything that's too weird. Um, okay, so let's look at a problem. These are going to feel very, very similar to Ka problems, except we're just using Kb. Um, we need to calculate the pH of a 15 molar solution of ammonia, and they give us a Kb for ammonia. And because we are going to use uh, Kb, that means I have to produce a hydroxide. And so that means that NH3, even though I might not have it memorized, that's going to behave as a base. So NH3 aqueous plus HOH. And bases pick up H pluses. So this will become NH4 plus 1 aqueous plus the hydroxide. And I'm going to set up a rice table. There's my reaction, my initial, my change in concentration, and then my equilibrium values. And water is a pure liquid, so I can just put an X there right away. And the ammonia is 15.0 molar. Uh, ammonium, or NH4 plus 1, is 0, and hydroxide is 0. So we're going to shift to the right. So I end up with 15.0 minus X, X, and X. And here, I'm going to write my K expression. And it is, in fact, a KB. I did produce hydroxide. So this is NH4 plus 1, OH minus 1 divided by NH3. What that'll give me is X times X divided by 15 minus X. And that'll equal my KB, which is 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5. I can make life a little bit easier and simplify some of these. I can say X times X will be X squared. And then 15 minus X, I don't want to do the quadratic formula. Um, so I will just get rid of that. Of course, if you have a TI Inspire and you're using the solve for X feature, of course you can do that and get the actual 
uh, correct x value, where mine, what I'm going to do with the 5% rule is a little bit rounded, and that's acceptable for the AP test. So if I, I need to multiply each side by 15. So 15 times 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5. And what I get is I get 2.7 times 10 to the minus 4, and that'll equal x squared. Take the square root of each side. And what I end up with is I get x is equal to 1.6 times 10 to the minus 2. <laughs> okay, now I'm asked to do the pH. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the negative log of x, but I'm going to rep recognize that x represents hydroxide. So really when I take the negative log of this, that is the pOH. So pOH equals negative log concentration of hydroxide. POOH equals negative log 1.6 times 10 to the minus 2. And my POH is equal to 1.78. But I need the pH, so I just remember that pH plus POH equals 14. So if I take 14 minus 1.78, I will get 12.22. And that will be my P. Oops, I wrote POH, but that'll be my pH. And that should make sense. This is uh, ammonia is behaving as a base. We just see that up here. It is uh, ammonia is producing some hydroxide. And because of that, I should expect the pH to be higher than 7. Okay, let's look at another one. Um, we have to calculate the pH again. And we have methylamine here. And the Kb for methylamine is 4.38 times 10 to the minus 4. So methylamine, you may have heard the, this before if you have seen Breaking Bad. This is a chemical that they uh, use in Breaking Bad. But methylamine is going to be aqueous, and it's going to react with water. Um, and the clue that I need to use... Uh, or I need to produce hydroxide is I've got two clues, I think. One is that this formula for methylamine does not have an H out in front, which means it's probably not going to behave as an acid. Additionally, they give me uh, Kb, and so that's a clue that I need to produce hydroxide. So what I need is I need OH minus 1 over here. And then, again, this is what I talked about at the beginning of the video. This NH group, that's the amine part. And so that will actually pick up um, the hydrogen, the H+. Plus. It was neutral before, so now it'll be positive because it picks up the H+. Plus. Um, okay, now I'm going to build a rice table. Uh, liquid water is just going to be an X. This initial concentration of methylamine is 1.0 molar, 0, and 0. So we're going to subtract X, 1.0 minus X, plus X, plus X. We get X and X. So my Kb, which I can use because I have hydroxide, is equal to hydroxide times uh, the conjugate acid, CH3. 3 NH3 plus 1 divided by my methylamine, which I started with. And then I'm going to plug in what I know, and I have X times X divided by 1.0 minus X. That equals 4.38 times 10 to the minus 4. And then I can make life a little bit easier. X times X is X squared. I can do the 5% rule here, get rid of the minus X. And then really the one, when I solve for X, is going to multiply each side by one, and so that actually goes away. And so I'll take the square root. I can predict what the square root of this will be about four. The square root of that is two, and then 10 to the minus 4, the square root of that is 10 to the minus 2. So when I plug this into my calculator, I get an answer that's not too surprising. And I get 2.09 times 10 to the minus 2. Uh, I need to get the pH, so I'll take the negative log of that. 
the only thing I'm going to make sure of is that X is really hydroxide. So when I take the negative log of that, that is really the pOH. So pOH equals negative log 4.38 times 10 to the minus 4. And my pOH, when I do that, is 1.68. I will take 14 minus 1.68, uh, and I will end up getting 12.32, which is the pH of the solution. Again, not surprising, we do have a base, so we should expect the solution to be uh, slightly basic. Okay, now I'm gonna show a different way to do um, letter C. Letter C is a little bit tricky. We are given 0.1 molar of ammonium chloride. We are given Kb, and, we're, and that Kb is specifically for NH3, which is a base. And we need to calculate the pH. And here's what's a little bit weird, is my base, is NH3, which means my acid, which has um, an extra H, will be NH4 plus 1. And I am given NH4 plus 1 to start out with. And so I'm going to actually, I'm going to ignore the chlorine because the chlorine is not part of this at all. So I'm just going to erase that guy there. That way it's easier to see. So I'm, I have ammonium. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take NH4 plus one plus water. And um, the reason I'm doing this is because my initial concentration is for NH4 plus one and not for NH3. So because this is an acid, it's going to lose an H, and I'm going to get its conjugate base, which is NH3, and then I'm going to end up with H3O plus 1. And I can do a rice table. This is 0 0.10. Water, of course, is just an X. 0, 0, minus X, plus X, plus X, 0 0.10 minus x, x, and x. And then I'm gonna write my K expression. K is equal to H3O plus one times NH3, both to the first power, divided by NH4 plus one. Now, is this Ka or Kb? And the answer is, well, I produced H3O plus 1, so this has got to be Ka. Because remember, to use a Kb, you have to have hydroxide. And to use a Ka, you have to have H plus or H3O plus. So I can plug in what I know. I know that this is going to be x squared divided by 0 0.10 minus x. But I don't have Ka. What I really have is Kb. But if you remember from the beginning of this unit, there's an easy conversion. What that is, is that Kw equals Ka times Kb. And so what I can say is, well, Kw, according to my formula sheet, is 1 times 10 to the minus 14. We need Ka to end up solving this. And so the Kb that they give us is 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5. And now that I have Ka, if I plug that into my calculator, I get 5.56 times 10 to the minus 10. And now I can do the 5% rule. I will get rid of minus x. Okay, and when I solve for x here, I end up getting 7.45 times 10 to the minus 6. We are solving for pH, so when I take the negative log of that, because x is H+, plus, that will be pH. So 
So 7.45 times 10 to the minus 6. And I know that the pH, because the exponent of this is minus 6, it will be a little bit less than 6. And in fact, it is because I get 5.12. That's the final answer.